Division is one of the four basic arithmetic operations that form the basis for other, more complex calculations. The common way to divide in Excel is to use a slash as the division symbol. So 100 divided by 25 would be equals 100 slash 25. You can either use explicit values like we did here, or you can use cell references. So if you have 100 here and 25 here, you could say equals a3 slash b3 and enter. The cell which contains the formula will display the result of the formula, but the formula bar will display exactly what was typed into the cell. Is there a divide function in Excel? Maybe you've seen the quotient function, and since the word quotient is associated with division, you may have assumed that it was an alternative way to do division. Well, the quotient function is a way to divide, but only integers are returned. That is, the whole number without the remainder. So to divide the value 101 by 25 using the quotient function, we type equals quotient open parenthesis 101 comma 25 close parenthesis and enter. We see a result of 4 here, but if we use the standard division formula, 101 divided by 25, we'd have gotten a result of 4.04. .04. So the quotient function returns only the whole number and discards the remainder. This can be useful in circumstances where only whole number answers are valid and rounding isn't desired. If we wanted to do the reverse, keep the remainder and discard the whole number after a division operation, then we'd use the mod function. The mod function is equals mod open parenthesis the number, so 101, comma the divisor, 25, close parenthesis. So after this division operation takes place, there's a remainder of 1. Dividing values in one column by values in another column in Excel is quite easy. Take for instance this situation. Here we have a list of six spices where the brand names are shown in column A, the prices in column B, and the volume of each container in column C. We can find out which product is the cheapest by dividing the price by the number of grams in each bottle. So we can type equals B2 slash C2 and enter. We've increased the number format to three decimal places and you'll soon see why, but we can see that for the first product, the price is 0 0.013 cents. And let's quickly copy this formula to the remaining rows by dragging on the fill handle here. And of course, because we use relative cell references, the formula adjusts for each row so that the formula in D3 divides B3 by C3, the one in D4 divides B4 by C4, and so on. So we're all done, and we can see that each product works out to roughly one or two cents per gram. But because we increase the decimals to three places, we can see that the Mama's Kitchen brand is the cheapest at 0.012 cents per gram. We could have also used an array formula to get the same result. We may prefer to use an array formula to prevent accidental deletion or alteration of a formula. This is because with array formulas, only the first cell, the one where the formula was actually entered, can be edited. So let's try that here. We've deleted this formula. And what we'll do is to highlight the entire range where we want the results to be. And then we start typing equals B2 to B7 slash C2 to C7. And now instead of pressing enter, we press control shift enter. If you're on a Mac, you'd press Command and Enter. What Excel does is to automatically enclose your array formula in curly brackets to remind you in the future that this was entered as a CSE formula. If you try to delete or edit any of the cells below the one where the formula was entered, Excel gives an error message. You can divide a range by a constant number 
either by entering that number as an explicit value, hard coding it within the formula, or by placing that constant value in a cell like we have here, and using an absolute cell reference to divide by the value in that cell. Let's do both here. Let's pretend this is a restaurant menu where the prices are listed in Canadian dollars. If our exchange rate is 1.25, we can calculate the prices in US dollars by dividing each value by $1.25. So we could do equals this price divided by 1.25 and enter. And we can copy this formula and we'd have the price in US dollars for each item. The second way to do this is by saying equals this price divided by the exchange rate. And we'd make that reference absolute by doing F4 on our Windows keyboard or Command T on a Mac keyboard. Hit enter and copy the formula by double clicking or dragging on the fill handle. The advantage with using this method is that if we choose to update our exchange rate, only one cell needs to be changed and all the currency conversions will be updated automatically. So if our exchange rate changes to 1.31, the calculations are done automatically. If you ever encounter an error response which says hashtag div slash zero, it points to the fact that you're attempting to divide by a zero. So if we did this, divided by zero, this is the error message that we get. Now, sometimes that's unavoidable because maybe you're waiting on some other information to enter your divisor. So if we don't have our exchange rate ready yet, then this is the error message that we'll get. But if you're like me and you don't like seeing errors on your worksheet, you might consider using an if error formula to catch that error and return an alternative result like a blank. So what you want to do is to get in front of your calculation and type if error, open parenthesis, and after the calculation say, if this value is an error, here's what I want you to do. And what we've done here is to enter double empty quotes to say to Excel, if this value is an error, just display nothing. And we close our formula with a parenthesis and enter. And this is great because our divisor is zero, which would have returned an error, but Excel doesn't display that error. Once we've got our new exchange rate, we can enter it here. And our formula works perfectly. And that's how we divide. Subscribe to our channel to get more tips on working in Excel. Ready to learn more about Microsoft Excel? Then check out the full course on GoSkills.com. Click the link in the description.